Hey, how's it, Ryan? How you doing, man? Yeah, lucky like Angus. Um, yeah, it's all good, man. Uh, we just landed yesterday, got back from Monaco. So, yeah, I think the spirit is good. Body is a bit sore, but yeah, recovering nice, nicely at home. Uh, I'm glad you guys are back safely. And speaking of, eh, um, what is the feeling after Monaco is done and dusted? And what was said after that dramatic final against GB? Yeah, I think we peaked at the right time. Um, like you, like you obviously know, it was a bit of a difficult year for us. Actually, a bit of a difficult two years for us with coaches coming in and coaches going out. And yeah, there was a lot of drama within the team with obviously some players voicing their opinions and so forth. Um, but yeah, to to be able to get that win in Monaco was special. Um, I think yeah, that's one of the most memorable tournaments that I've probably had. And yeah, it's it's a tournament that I haven't really experienced um, in terms of the pressure. I've played in many finals. I've played in many big games and big tournaments. But yeah, this was something different. I think there was a lot of stress. There was a lot of emotions um, that was relieved at the end of that 14 minutes. Yeah, and it was evident uh, after the final whistle blew. I saw Impi, um, you know, crying his, his eyes out. And, and understandably so, after the tough two years you guys had, um, but it's totally understandable, like I said. So, um, I mean, you guys won World Series together. Many of you was in the group, some not. But um, I think the pressure of, you know, having, having to win to get to the Olympics after such a turbulent time was was obviously quite big for you guys. And well done on putting on putting through to, with that as well, you know. And, um, I mean, it was evident your attitudes in defense, especially. If I look over the course of the, the past season or two, um, defensively not always the best attack was pretty good as, as usual but um was it a key concern for you guys to to work more on your defense and make sure that you don't concede many tries i think if i'm not mistaken i think you conceded like four over the course of the weekend um so it wasn't a lot you know it was immediately four or five tries i think in total in comparison to what you guys scored so was that the, the focus point for you guys you know, heading into the the tournament in monaco and also for the paris olympics coming up now as well yeah, 100%. Um, I think we conceded three tries. Um, so, yeah, that's a stat we can definitely be proud of. Um, look, that's where I have to give, give credit to Coach Philip. Um, he organized our defense to be more seven in the line, where um, normal teams will have six with a sweeper, normally Salvin or whoever, roaming at the back. Um, and he felt that with the particular... Um, members that we have being a smaller team uh, we need to have seven in the line um, speed is never a problem for us so that's why you'll see Tristan Lates um, or Salvin always working back to get the ball whenever they kick that's why we would always have a sweeper um, but yeah being seven in line that made us obviously stronger and we did it for the first time in Singapore which wasn't too bad and then in Madrid, we also tried it again, but yeah, that, it didn't really work too great. I think there was a lot of um, unclarity in terms of what the roles was. Um, and again, that's why I need to give credit to, to Philip. Um, he basically, that all two weeks after Madrid, uh, we were just doing detail sessions in terms of what your roles and responsibilities are in the defense uh, system. Um, and I think it clicked now. It clicked in Monaco. Um, I think the guys knew where they were in the system, what the roles and expectations were. Um, and yeah, I think the guys just executed making making tackles. Um, we we kind of strive ourselves on um, defense. I think our stats normally is 82% what we strive for. And like you say, we've been lacking this whole season. And yeah, that's not acceptable in, in terms of our standards. And yeah, I'm glad that, like I said, we peaked at the right time. Our defense system peaked at the right time. And yeah, it was vital for us to get that right. You know, one thing I've noticed, Ryan, is speaking of defense now, is um, especially when you guys are yellow cards, the thing that I've noticed is that when it comes to the breakdown, normally you would see three, four guys in there or two or three guys in there. And you manage it so well in terms of, especially when you had a yellow card, there would be no overcommitting at the breakdown. One guy makes a tackle, other guys just, just, just like predict the ball uh, and vice versa. But there was never too many guys in there that left space on the outside, you know. So I think that was suspicious. One thing I've noticed, just like off the eye, and I thought to myself, this is actually brilliant. Because a lot of times when teams under the pre under pressure, you know, with the yellow card or maybe a man down in back play, they tend to still stick to the system as to what it is and not adapt to the situation, you know. And you get two guys into a breakdown, you man short on the outside. So 
I think that was brilliant as well, you know, just something I've observed, you know, in the matches that I saw this weekend. Um, but I mean, uh, you said it now, you know, despite the disappointing sevens tournament with some distractions off the field, um, what kept the group's belief together that you can make it to Paris throughout the season and even now during this tournament as well? Well, I think um, it starts with the coach. I think the coach uh, made it very clear who's his group, um, who's the the 12 guys or the 16 guys. We normally practice with 16 guys and then you kind of know where you stand in terms of rankings and so forth. So, yeah, I think it starts with the coach um, just being very clear with where the guys stand, um, giving the guys clarity, um, knowing where you are in the system in terms of picking order. Um, and then obviously you can go play with a with a good odd. Um, I think, like I said, we as seniors also came together and said that uh, yeah, we need to focus this tournament. We need to get rid of any distractions. Um, we need to put the system first again, like we normally do. Um, and whenever we put the system first, that's normally when we succeed. Um, and that's what happened this weekend. Um, like you like you said, um, I think we played for each other. We played for the system, like past games, like past tournaments. Um, and yeah, I think we slowly. Turning that table, we're slowly getting back to where we were, um, 2018, 2019, when we were so successful. Um, but it's a process. I think, yeah, it's good that we got this win. Um, winning is a habit, but losing can also become a habit. And I'm glad that we broke that habit now. Yeah, it's not going to get any easier now. I think you guys are in the pool with, I think, Fiji and New Zealand for the Olympics, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, uh, New Zealand, uh, Ireland, Japan. Ireland, sorry. Yeah, yeah, my bad. Um, so what's your, your feel on that? You know, it's not the easiest opponents. I mean, Ireland has been a bit of a thorn in the flesh for, for you guys in the last two years. I mean, I think back to that uh, Sevens World Cup here in Cape Town in 2022, you know, it, it was a, a very weird day in the sense of you guys played quite late in that. Well, not you didn't play that day, but I mean, the team played quite late that day after winning the, the opening game. And um, yeah, it just didn't go the way of the blitz box today. So... I mean, Ireland has been been tough for the Blitzbox as of late. Um, New Zealand as well. So, what what attitude would you approach? You know, those kind of matches the same as you did this weekend, or do you take it on with something a bit more more vigorish, or just stick to the system like you normally do? No, I think the whole focus this weekend was to focus on ourselves. Um, I think when we do ourselves well, then obviously the the re results will look after itself. Um, Look, you, you can't be naive to the fact that Ireland has been beating us. Um, we only beat them in Hong Kong, if I'm not mistaken, that first game. Um, they just do the basics well. Um, and that's what we did this weekend. We kept up all. We made tackles. We made turnovers. Um, we didn't make any errors. We had a low error rate. Um, and that's what this team is all about. Then you have guys like Salvin, Tristan Lates, um, Kiwanokia, bringing the magic and so forth. Um, so for us, it's like I said, it's, it's all about us. It's, the focus is on us. Um, obviously, we're wary of Ireland and Japan and New Zealand, but in the same sense, they need to be aware of us. I think, like I said, we're peaking at the right time. Um, we're gaining momentum. We, we're on the right path. Um, so yeah, if, if we do ourselves 100%, I think the results will look after themselves. No, most definitely. I look at that game you played against New Zealand, I think in the last tournament, um, I think it was Madrid. We were, there was a couple of cards and it was just all over the show. But yeah. You came so close to actually winning that game, which is the most bizarre thing ever. Like, I don't think that scoreline even justifies, you know, how, how tough that game was and how close you guys to, uh, to beating New Zealand. You know, so there's a lot to take from that game as well. But um, in any case, you know, like despite obviously winning the Olympics now, um, what other goals do you have for, for the event as well, um, heading into into that um, Paris Olympics? Like, what other goals does the squad have, apart from winning it, like I said? Well, to be fair, we haven't really talked about that. I think our focus was purely on qualifying for the Olympics. Um, we'll start next Thursday again. Um, we have this whole week off to uh, basically regroup and get away from rugby and so forth. Um, and then Coach uh, Philly will obviously chat to the guys and hear our input and we'll hear his input. And yeah, we'll all obviously say the same thing in terms of, like you said, winning a tournament. But I can promise you, just being in the system and I know how it works, the focus will be on that first game. That's what yeah. that's the logo everyone says always. Uh, the focus will be on, let's say, I, I'm not sure if we're playing Japan, Ireland or New Zealand, but that will be the first focus. I can 100% tell you that. And then, yeah, we'll take it game for game. Um, and then we'll see what, what happens. Obviously, we want to we wanna win. Um, you're not going to the Olympics to just participate. Like I said, I think we're peaking at the right time. So realistically, I think it is possible. I think anything can happen. It's a, a couple of um, 
difficult pools on the other side with France, Fiji, and and those, those kind of teams playing each other. So, like I said, any, anything can happen in that tournament. No, most definitely. And, and sevens is a funny game. You think back to, I think it was 2016 when Japan came up against New Zealand and they actually won, I think 12 points to 10. Yeah. And that's a team that had Sunny mm-hmm. Williams in it, you know. So, uh, big events like uh, we saw the cricket now as well. Any team can beat anyone on the day. And if it works for you, it works for you, you know. So, most definitely... It can uh, go the bliss box way as well. But um, just lastly, I want to keep it too long in your off day. Um, just a message to, to the supporters, obviously. Um, and what can they expect from the team in the Olympics as well? Yeah, firstly, I want to say thank you to the supporters. Um, you know, yourself and Judah, I mean, this has been a tough two years for, for the supporters. I can't imagine um, waking up in the uh, early hours just to see us lose and Lose badly also. Um, it's not nice. It's, uh, it's yeah. You know, obviously, you go on the pitch to win, um, and as a supporter, you obviously expect that from from the Springbok Sevens and the Springbok badge. Um, so yeah, just thank you for the loyalty. Um, thank you for sticking with us. Um, like I said, I think we are on the right path. Um, the, the boxes are being ticked on our side. We're really fighting hard for the system. Um, we're leaving at um, like I said, all the outside noises, and we're focusing on ourselves. Um, we're really trying to make the system proud again. Um, so yeah, just thank you from from our side. And yeah, I think, like I said, if if all goes well, I think a lot of people will be surprised. I think a lot of the haters will be silenced. Um, I think that's also a thing that yeah, it's it's fueling me personally. Obviously, you see the comments and you see the the hate that's thrown to our side, and you have to take it with a pinch of salt. Obviously, supporters have their own opinion, but sometimes they don't have the full picture of what's going on inside the system. Um, but yeah, like I said, to the truly, to the fans that has been loyal to us throughout these two years, times, yeah, just thank you very, very much. Now, Ram, for what I what I saw this past weekend in in Monaco, I, I think that you're on the right path. I think you guys really be that at the right time, like you just mentioned now. Um, and the system looks like it's in in place again to its back to its old self or getting close to it, you know. So um, I have no doubt that you guys can go all the way and win this whole thing against all odds. And um, you know what they say about an underdog, you know, they're always the most dangerous, especially when you return off. But Ryan, I mean, thanks again for your time. Um, you always make up a, a good uh, session for me. Um, so I appreciate it as always. And um, yeah, keep well and recover well. And yeah, I'll see you soon for that copy that you promised me. <laughs> Remember the same. Thanks, Angus. Cheers. Thank you, man. Bye-bye.